welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a snow globe effect around your colouring images. Now this is inspired by the latest page that I did in the book Sago och Sagna by Emily Lydhall Oberg and this was just the bear on the page sitting on top of the suitcases and I thought it just looked a bit lost. There was a lot of white left around him and I just wanted to anchor him a little bit on the page and give it a little bit of jazz. So I decided to create this snow globe around him and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. Now for this illustration I used a small plate to go around um, and make the circle shape. For this demonstration I'm not going to be doing it on that much of a large scale because it's going to take me ages and ages to colour it in so I want to show you the whole process so we'll do it on a slightly smaller um, scale. Now I've got one of these circle templates here, you can get these from Amazon, Ebay, pretty much anywhere, anywhere. and um, I'm going to be using the largest one. So I've got the other end of a Tombow brush marker here and I'm just going to trace the outline. I don't know why I've done it on the side of the paper rather than in the middle, that's quite uh, not great for my OCD but anyway um, we've got our circle here so that's the basics what you'd start off with. Now actually I can use the rest of this paper to show you what I mean by going around an object. So for example on the picture I just showed you you've got the suitcases all stacked up um, and you've got the <laughs> the bear sat on top of them. This is just a general bear shape. I am literally not uh, doing this for any sort of artist recognition whatsoever, as you can see. But anyway, when you've got um, an illustration already there to work with, for example, the bear, what you would do is you would get your um, circle template or something that's circular anyway, and you would measure it and see which circle you would need to use so that you would get the whole of the image into it. So let's say this one. And then you would just go from the edge of the illustration around to the other edge of the illustration like that and that would be your background. Now you could do this um, as a moon or a sun behind your image. You could do quite a lot of things really, you could just block colour it in and just give it a bit of a background. If there's a lot of white on the page and you want to give it a bit more interest, it doesn't have to be a sun, a moon, a snow globe, it can just be a block of colour. So, back to what I was doing. <clears throat> right, so now we've got our actual snow globe. Now what I did was I took the darkest one of the colours that I was going to use, and in this case it was peacock blue, and I did an outline of the shape very very similar to what we did with the baubles when we were colouring baubles or Christmas decorations in the last video. We're leaving that slight bit of gap around about two millimetres between the colour and the edge of the outline. So we just outline that and I'm going to do this all in real time so that you can see the exact process. Now don't worry, it's not going to be an exact copy of the bauble, uh, the bauble tutorial, it is different. It's just that we do start off with the same step, which is outlining two millimetres in. And that outlining just serves to give it a 3D kind of rounded shape. So when you've got your basic outline in, try and keep your gap the same width all the way round. I've done this for quick purposes so it's not perfect but try and keep it quite uniform and now what I did was I coloured in a little bit of the circle so that we can start to blend in our next colours very very simple this technique as always so I'm just colouring in and just widening that circle a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat guys, it's been absolutely terrible for the last six weeks. Uh, I've had this chest infection, it's not nice. It does make me sound a little bit croaky and I hope that's not too annoying on the video. I keep clearing my throat. But I did want to get this out for you before Christmas because since I posted my um, snow globe bear on social media I've had quite a few people ask if I would show how I did it. Now at the time when I'm doing these um, pages, I'm usually sat in front of the TV watching a film or something like that. I'm not at my desk. Um, so I don't, I don't usually film them 
sort of in situ if you know what I mean and also I don't really know how it's going to turn out this it's always just a bit of trial and error to me so I never film it sort of when I'm doing it it's just an idea that comes into my head and I see if I can make it work on the page um, but I thought I would properly show you how to do this today so you can see that we're just colouring the inside of that outline that we've made and we're getting darker at the outer edges and lighter as we go in because we are going to be blending in um, some other colours. So very very rough, that's the basic idea. Now we're going to go in with our next colour which is non photo blue. As I say you can use any three colours you like, um, this is the colour palette that I used for the bear. But as long as the three colours blend nicely together, you can do anything you like. You could even do a galaxy inside of a snow globe. That would be a really good idea, wouldn't it? You could do the northern lights inside a snow globe. You can do anything you like. I just like how the adding the shape um, just anchors the subject to the page a little bit more than it just being floating in the centre, if that makes sense. So you could do any shape really, you could draw a triangle behind him, you could do a geometrical shape, you could do anything, just experiment really. So I'm very very roughly um, colouring and blending with the non-photo blue and just giving that little bit of a hazy rough edge as we get into the centre for our final colour to blend into. Something a bit like that, not being very uh, <laughs> careful as you can tell. Okay, and then the final colour that I used was the powder blue. And again, exactly the same process, you're blending into the previous colour and extending it out to the centre. Now what I did around the bear was I left some white around him to give it an extra sort of glowy look. So you can do that as well. This could also be used as a technique for colouring a crystal ball, maybe with some purples. <laughs> so as you can see, it's similar to the bauble, but it's not the same. But most of my kind of work has similar practices anyway. It's just using them for different things and making them look a bit different. So I'm leaving some white in the centre, just blending it right out to the white. And now what I did it's totally up to you if you want to do this, but because I was working on a really large area, it's obviously quite difficult to get a perfect blend of colours in a large area. It's not too bad here because we're sort of contained, but for, for let me just show you the, um, the bear again. So with this being quite a large area, it was really hard to get this blend. Um, so what I used was some blending solution. Now you can just do it with your pencils. I usually would just do it with pencils. But as I say, because it was a large area, I needed a little bit of help. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing as I did in the bear just to show you. But you could just use your pencils to blend this. You really don't have to use this if you don't have it. Um, especially if you're using uh, this technique on a very small area. So I've got the blending solution here. I'm dipping a paintbrush in and I'm just painting it on. There's no pressure here whatsoever. We're just painting it on and this will just allow the the wax to break down the wax in the pencil that is and give a nice sort of fluid blend so just painting it on just wipe a little bit off there because it's starting to get a bit dark in the center we don't want that and there we go. So it doesn't matter how rough you are with this, by the way. You can just paint it on. And it will sort of do a bit of work for you. Now, what I usually do as well is when I've painted it on, I just use the pad of my finger to smooth it like this. I don't know whether you can see the difference. Just use a different finger in the centre because I really don't want to lose... Uh, that white that we've got in the center and we just blend it with our finger like that 
obviously wash your hands and everything it, it is blending solution you don't want to keep it on your hands uh, you might not even want to do this in the first place but me you know I'm, I'm sort of I've always got dirty hands full of fluid and full of all sorts of uh, art supplies so this is the blending solution that I'm using by the way it's the spectrum noir so you can see now that I've sort of blended it a little bit it's much softer um, and we've still got that nice graduation of colour now you can go over the top of blending solution it provides a really really nice surface for you to go over the top and add more layers of pencil in would recommend getting some if you don't have some because it, it makes life a lot easier sometimes and you can go over with your pencil and try and blend it a little nicer or do whatever you want to do but that's the basic thing anyway I'm not going to go too far with this blending solution because not everyone has it okay so once you have it blended to your to your likeness to your likeness to your liking <laughs> you can then go in with your lightest color which in my case is the powder blue and fill in that two millimeter gap that we left at the start also go straight over your black line like we did on the bauble tutorial very very similar but our highlight is staying in the middle rather than being over at this end and I've gone out of the lines there but that's fine don't worry about that and then once you have used quite hard pressure you should end up with a really fuzzy outline of that darkest blue that we put down at the start so do you see how that's gone like quite fuzzy and it doesn't look so harsh that with, because we've we've coloured in that two millimetre gap and it's quite like I say it'd be really nice to do for um, a crystal ball so that is the basics of it now of course to make it look rounded we're going to have to add in some uh, white so I'm just cleaning off my Posca pen making sure that we've got lots of <clears throat> paint in there you can use a white gel pen you can use a Posca pen you can use white paint anything you like and first of all we're going to make some lines around the edge so I usually go just a millimeter in from the start of the darkest color so that you can still see that we've got that darkest color but we are doing that shine now the most important thing when you're doing these shine lines or highlight lines is to keep them consistent if possible <clears throat> so I mean that you want to be able to see the same amount of the darkest blue on this side all the way around the curve otherwise it's going to look a little bit odd we're trying to keep this circular shape now my uh, Posca pen was used for colouring on rocks and painting rocks so it's a little bit frayed but that's okay there is a way of cleaning up if you need to so I'm just adding in these lines first and then we'll clean them up a little bit what you can also do is make you can make the top slightly thicker and taper it down a little don't worry about this I know it looks awful at the moment we will sort it out and you can also do another line on this side same principle this Posca pen is really really thick it worked okay for the bear because we were on quite a large surface there but maybe for this tutorial I should have used uh, the, the white gel pen now anyway you can come back in with your darkest color and tidy this up a little bit so once it's dry Get your pencil make sure it's nice and sharp and this will just lift any of the white from where you don't want it to be oh shouldn't have done that anyhow so you can start to shape this line a little bit if it's gone astray like mine and i'm just going to add in a little bit of white on top of that because I forgot that my finger is full of blue and it just took some of that white away so I'll clean that up again in a second when it's dry again for this side just making sure that it's nice and curved and following the curve of the ball the circle a little bit like that maybe make this slightly thinner here so that it looks uniform just mess around with it you know obviously I can be here all day picking at it and uh, 
neatening it up, but you just mess around with it until you're happy. Maybe make this slightly thinner. Something like that. So when you're happy that you've got that kind of line there and it's rounded and it looks nice, that's fine. So when you've done that, the final step is to, of course, add in your snow because it's not a snow globe without the snow. So literally just dotting my Posca all the way around. You could use larger snowdrops in between the littler ones just to mix it up a little bit. All the way around. Like that, as much as you like. And then at the bottom of the bear, where the suitcases were, I actually used my white pen to add in some settled snow. So you can do that as well, just by sort of doing that shaky motion with your hand and sort of letting the pen go where it wants to go within the restraints of the circle. And you'll get a lovely settled snow effect. So if this is around an object like it was with the bear, you would just settle the snow around it like that. And that is it. So it's very, very similar to the bauble technique, but it's different in a lot of ways. Um, I did go over the, the black outline with the powder blue just to soften it a little bit so that it doesn't look so flat on the page. It looks like it could curve round possibly, but anyhow, that's how I do it. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Very simple as always. And um, do let me know in the comments and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.